So I'm uh, making a quick stop in downtown Half Moon Bay and I'm going to Cafe Society to get a coffee and I'm sort of conflicted because I'm tempted to get half caffeinated <laughs> but I don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes like I'm not I'm kind of on the fence about caffeine like I'm not sure how I feel about it it definitely helps me with productivity like and but it gives me sort of like this nervous feeling that I'm not sure that I really want. So maybe I'll try a half calf and we'll see how it goes. This will be a good test. Anyway, so I'm, looks like I'm here. So I was all ready to have my cafe moment there, but the uh, coffee was definitely too hot to drink. Um, and there's nothing I like less than a burnt tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can all relate to that. So anyway, and also I forgot my banana. I was all ready to just kick it there. It was very, very nice. So um, I'm gonna let this coffee cool off and then I'll give it a try. But it smells good. So I moved to California with my family uh, the summer after eighth grade. And um, driving along Highway 1 here reminds me of, uh, of that first summer. In New Jersey, we were far from the ocean and I always loved the ocean and, um, you know, probably most people do. But anyway, um, so when we moved here to California and we were nearby the ocean, I have two younger brothers and we like, we, you know, had my dad driving us to the ocean like almost every day. And he had a flexible schedule, I think. He must have, because I remember coming over even during the week. And um, so, and we would swim and the ocean is freezing. <laughs> but you know kids, they don't care, right? So like, um, we would go in the ocean and swim, uh, primarily at San Gregorio, which is like kind of rough too. So driving along this highway here, Highway 1, I'm often reminded of that first summer. Um, and I think the first time you experience a new place, it kind of creates these indelible memories that you'll never forget. Plus too, I think when you're younger, at least for me, I have such vivid memories of my childhood. Yeah, I really remember that summer clearly. I even remember the, it was the summer of 79, I believe it was 1979, you know, I remember the music we listened to on the way over. He was, he had bought uh, Fleetwood Mac Rumors. And we, you know, my brothers and I didn't listen to that. We didn't, we, I was probably in 1979, I was probably listening to something like Cheap Trick and uh, God, what else? Mostly stuff that was on the radio, you know, like uh, Elton John and things like that. I was a big, you know, fan of just kind of pop radio. So anyway, and I know, I know Rumors was a huge album, but uh, it just seemed kind of adult to me, you know, but after listening to it for like a few days, we knew all the songs and it, obviously it's a great album, it's a classic. But uh, so yeah, I have memories of driving Highway 1 with, you know, wet heads, going home, listening to rumors. Okay, so I'm here at Pescadero and I think I might just recreate, oh wow, look at that car. So I'm pretty sure it's a Austin Healey 1000 or 3000. Anyway, always one of that was always uh, one of my favorite cars. Anyhow, so I'm trying the coffee. I've got a banana. No peanut butter today. <sighs> Definitely good. I don't know. It's leaking. Hmm, that's weird. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. So I'll definitely go back there. Yeah, I don't know why it's leaking all over. I like the Hydro Flask, but it keeps the coffee so hot that it's almost impossible to drink. Okay, so it is absolutely beautiful out here. It is kind of breezy and a little cool, but very comfortable. And I'm just kind of walking around exploring and just trying to see if I can find a good place to paint. Um, I might try to get down, I'm up on the cliffs, I might try to get down on the beach and then paint from down there, so, uh, but yeah, really nice day out here. Okay, so I think I'm going to go to another end of the beach and, uh, anyway, one of the things I really like out here is, is meeting and talking to people, so I just had a nice conversation with a woman who is filming with like a zoom lens attached to her iPhone and she was trying to catch some of the seals going in and out of the water. Anyway, so now I'm gonna try to get down on the beach and see if it's uh, less windy down there.
Okay, so I'm not finding any compositions that are sort of jumping out at me yet, but um, I'm having a great time just looking around. It's a super low tide. So there's all these tide pools and the weather's just beautiful. And I found this like really, it's like the perfect little tide pool. I'll show it to you. I think all I see in there are crabs, but maybe they're, oh no, I just saw a little fish too. Okay, so there are a bunch of seals out behind me sort of frolicking in this shallow area. And uh, I've seen a lot of seals out here, but I've never seen them this close to the beach. So I'm gonna see if I can get a good shot so you can uh, check them out. Wow, can you see the, uh, can you see the red and yellows of the cliffs reflected in the water? I don't know how you'd paint that, but it sure looks beautiful from here. Well, I could honestly just hang out here all day and just do nothing. <laughs> It'd be great to like set up a tent and just like kick back and read and listen to the ocean. But I came here to paint, so uh, I'm gonna go. I think there's nothing much down here. It's kind of advantageous to be elevated on the cliffs. It's a little windier, but I think the compositional opportunities are better. So I'm gonna head back to the first spot and, uh, and then set up and give it a go. So I've only got three brushes with me and to the left is a number 10 bright. The middle is a number six flat and the right is a number 10 flat. Uh, so that's it for brushes. And um, you know, I, I could use a larger brush, but my brush cleaner is too small. So I'm gonna have to make do with these. Um, but uh, I think they're a good size for this panel. I'm gonna do a 16 by 20. One thing that's kind of interesting I noticed is that I had some liquid in my cup from the last painting I did, which was about last plein air painting I did which was maybe almost a week ago and I just put it in a plastic bag with my used paper towels and I just noticed that it's still actually fresh I'll show you yeah so normally this would dry out if it was just left outside but um, in a plastic bag it stayed fresh yeah so I'm not staying exactly true to the subject matter um, I've added a horizon with the hills in the distance and I've kind of moved things around. I'm trying to decide what the most important thing is and I really like the rock reflections in this area and I'll see if I can show you those. So this area at the base of the rocks is what's really interesting to me. So I'm gonna uh, focus on that. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna run out of paint so I've decided to go back to the car just because I don't wanna be like, you know, in the full process and then um, run out of paint and have to go back to the car. So it'll also give me a chance to get my eyes off the canvas and uh, you know, I'll come back with fresh eyes and see if there's anything I need to do. Okay, so the whole thing is roughed in now and uh, so I'm gonna take a step back and look at it. But I like the idea of just kind of having, you know, a fast, really fast rough in and, um, and, you know, doing a larger panel, but doing it super fast and spontaneously. And then if it crashes and burns, it doesn't matter. Cause the feeling, my feeling is if you do it super fast like that and there's a lot of energy in it, if it does work, it's gonna be, you know, it could be a really great painting. So I'd rather do, you know, you know, go for it. And if I did five paintings that way and only have one turn out, it seems like it would be worth it to me. It's a funner way to paint anyway. Uh, so let's take a look at it from a distance. Okay, so there's some saturated colors, which is good. So when I do put the white in, it's gonna, it should pop. Um, but now I'm gonna just kind of fine tune the colors and have fun with it.
So far I'm liking the fact that the colors are really saturated and um, a lot of times with these seascapes the painting really comes together when you lay in the white water. I've been working at it for about an hour. I'm going to work at it a little more and then I'm going to go home and we can take a look and see how it came out. Okay, so this is more or less the finished product. Um, as usual, I'll probably do a little bit of cleanup here and there. But uh, what I was most attracted to was this wet sand uh, in the foreground here, the reflections of the rocks. And um, so I'm happy with the way that came out, especially because it's kind of messy and irregular, which is what I try to do. That's part of why I paint quickly is because it just um, keeps me from being too orderly. Um, and uh, But I made some other compositional changes, as I mentioned out there, like I lowered the horizon. If, if I'd drawn this accurately, the horizon would have been a bit higher, but I wanted to include those mountains in the distance. So, uh, yeah, other than that, you know, just worked quickly and, and had a good time. Uh, so I'll definitely go back to that spot again uh, and uh, maybe try it again. Maybe try the, try the same composition and see what happens. Okay, so as usual guys, thanks for hanging out and I will see you in the next video.